Hello and welcome to my fourth grade classroom and week 28 of the school year. Welcome, my name is Marily Sanchez. If you're new here, I'm a fourth grade teacher in South Florida and it is the end of the day on Monday. So let me go ahead and show you a glimpse of our agenda for today and some highlights from our learning. Before I show you this agenda, I just wanna do a disclaimer. I have been riding the struggle bus pretty much all day. It is so hard coming back to school when in the weekend we changed the time again because now we have started daylight savings time. So the clock moved ahead one hour and I am so missing that one hour. This morning it was so hard to get up and my brain just wasn't fully awake for most of the day. So I tried my best and the students felt it too. But you know what? We had an easygoing day, you know, way to start the week because this is our last week before spring break so here is the agenda as you can see we did pretty good with the morning in writing we got everything accomplished here and I'll show you one example of what I did with one of the groups in math because we were running out of time I left the weekly math review for tomorrow that's why the arrow is pointing to the right and we worked on our chapter 11 review test and because we needed more time with our review test we didn't get our science done which means I'm gonna to have to piggyback on that lesson and get it done tomorrow. I do have a little sheet that I wanted the students to complete at the end of the lesson to show their understanding of it. But anyway, I digress. Let me go ahead and show you one of the things that the students were doing this morning as we finished reading our anchor text, A Drop of Water which is this sheet right here, reading annotations. So as the students were reading the story, they were writing something surprising or something they found surprising, something they liked or loved, a question that they have, something they can visualize, connections they make, and when they learn something new. The students really love this anchor text and we started reading it on Friday and it's a longer text, so I knew I wasn't gonna be done by then. So today we did finish it and they were just in awe at how the author just describes how one drop of water goes through the entire water cycle and the different changes that it goes through. So it was great to have the students kind of visualize that. And also my students were able to make connections with writing because they were like, oh, that's like an introduction for that section. And look at the transition words that they're using and the precise language and the words that the author is using to describe that process. So that is a very beautiful thing indeed. Then we moved on to our writing lesson, which I started going over my writing paragraph example with my flare pen. Here it is. If you are not sure of what I'm talking about, we've been working on this particular topic for a while now. And this is one of the buckets of grouping ideas together. And this bucket turns into a paragraph. So the title of this bucket becomes a topic sentence. And then I went ahead and I showed how we can then explain this topic sentence through evidence and elaboration. So I was going through this with my flare pen when I started noticing that there was a group that was done. So what I wanted to do without writing on their actual paragraph, I typed up their paragraph and then I gave them some feedback. So here is the paragraph that that group wrote. So what I did is I gave myself a little feedback box so that I can write my notes in here as I notice different things that they are adding in their paragraph so that they can make revisions. And here it is right here where I highlighted the transition words. The green is the reason, the orange is elaboration, and the blue is the evidence. And I gave them some feedback here so that they know how they can go back in their original paragraph and make some revisions. As you can see, they are on the right track. They just need to make some changes to be more precise and specific and make sure that they are not confusing the information from the sources so that their ideas are more clear and connected to the topic. Then it was time for math, and in math we did our fun review game, Attack the Castle, by working on the Go Math Chapter 11 review test. And here are the results for that game. As you can see, three teams were tied, so they are tied for second place, and one team is in first, which is Yurifiki with only four attacks. 
and the students had a great time reviewing the concept in chapter 11, which was all about degrees. So tomorrow they'll take the chapter 11 test. I also got this weekend through Amazon. I ordered a class set 24 protractors so that all the students can have them and practice using an actual protractor because not everyone had one. And these are the protractors right here. I'll link them down below. I think this set of 24 was $17.99 and they were shipped the very next day. This is the new unit that we're going to start in science, and this is the little activity that I was going to have the students complete. They were going to do a six-word summary for lesson 5.1, which goes over natural resources and energy. So the title is right here. And then after they write their six-word summary, they can write an interesting idea or something new that they learned in the lesson. That is a rundown of what I plan to do today and what I got done. I also passed out some homework. And let me just give you a glimpse of some of the printables that I gave the students. They had a reading passage, which comes from our Wonder series, and it connects to the essential question. So the students will read that, and as they're reading that, they're going to complete this chronological order flow map to show the events that are happening in order. They can notice the years that are mentioned so that they can see how scientists have used telescopes, and they can answer these questions on the back. In addition to this, they also have the weekly math log, which is something that I put together, and they complete it Monday through Thursday so that they can practice their math fluency. And I also gave them the FSA math reference sheet because they started getting homework this week on measurement and they needed to have this in order to complete their homework. And that, my friends, is all that I have for today, Monday. And I'm going to go ahead and move you to Tuesday. Hello everyone, welcome to Tuesday. I'm going to try to make this quick because my camera is about to die and I don't know how much time I have to film. Let me show you a glimpse of our agenda. I haven't checked anything off, but I'll let you know what we got through. Starting with reading, we reread A Drop of Water, completed the Chronological Order Graphic Organizer and the Summary Graphic Organizer, but I have to move the reading response for tomorrow. In writing, the students worked on the similar activity they did yesterday, but with the opinion writing piece on kids and sports, working with either duos or trios on that body paragraph. They chose which one to work on, so they had to start with the bucket. And I'll show you how I updated that activity. In math, we went straight to the topic test because we were running out of time, so we didn't get to do the weekly math review. And in science, I knew this was gonna be ambitious, but we only got through the intro to topic five and lesson 5.1 on natural resources. I did give the students the half sheet that I showed you so that they could do a six word summary and write the most interesting thing or something new that they learned in the lesson. A lot of them didn't finish, so I'll give them time to do that tomorrow in the morning during do now. All right, let me quickly show you the graphic organizers for reading and how I updated the writing assignment. This is the chronological order organizer that I gave to the students that explains what happened when this this is supposed to be when a drop of water is added to a jar of water. So here are the events that we looked at and we discussed it. And here is the main idea graphic organizer for the entire story where we wrote the topic, the main idea, three supporting details that tell more about the main idea and put it all together for a summary paragraph. We did make the connection in writing because what we're doing here, finding the main idea, the supporting details and the summary in order to write the summary is the same thing that we're doing in writing with writing our Body paragraphs, topic sentence, detail, 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 and putting it all together. This is how I updated that writing sheet. So the bucket, I put reason one, this is the new topic. Whatever the title of the bucket is becomes a topic sentence. And then the students add at least three details. And then they use that to write their paragraph. And here are all the different parts of that. I also just finished working on all of the handouts for tomorrow's writing camp. It is the last day of writing camp, so I'll talk to you about that tomorrow. But I gotta go, so I will see you then. Hello everyone, welcome to Wednesday. I'm at the end of the day. I just finished a testing meeting because, like I mentioned previously, next week is spring break, and when we come back, we are getting ready for our state assessments 
not that particular week, but the week after. So we need to get trained on all the procedures that come with administering a state exam at that magnitude. So that's what I just finished. It's been an eventful day. Last night, I don't know if you noticed, maybe you didn't because I didn't show you, but I stayed here till like 8 p.m. last night. And then after I left here, I went to Target. First, I went to Party City. It was closed. Then I went to my local Publix and that one happened to be closed for some reason. So then I went to Target and I I found cotton candy and I'm going to show you why in a moment it was for a demonstration for today's writing camp so one of the reasons why I was here so late last night was because I am basically writing some of these writing camp lessons from scratch and today's lesson was on precise language and I did my research here and there trying to find different ways that I could present it to the students and I was working on the handouts for today's writing camp, which I'll show you. And then I went home because I knew it was late and I'm basically the only teacher here with the other people being the custodians that are working at night. So when I got home after going to Target, I started working on my PowerPoint and that took a lot. Let's just say that I was working past midnight and I'll show you the PowerPoint as well. So it's been, like I said, a very eventful day. Today also during lunchtime, I took in a little appointment because we had Wellway here and they were doing Wellness Wednesday for teachers. I'll show you some of the goodies that I received. But I did take some clips of the layout that the PTSA had put out for the teachers with some nice snacks. They gave us a bag with some goodies along with a bag of vegetables and fruit. There was also a nutritionist there who was doing body compositions on a scale. And we also had people doing massages, which at first I wasn't going to, but then I ended up getting a massage because my friend told me I should and I am so glad I did. It's one of those things that you don't know you need it until you get it done. So I've had a good day with that, being that I am kind of now working out of fumes because I think I've only slept three hours last night and my day's not over. I am going to go home after I wrap up this video clip for today, but then I have a telehealth appointment with my doctor. But then after that, after that, we are resting for the rest of the evening. That's for sure. All right. So before I get to everything that happened today, let's start with today's agenda. As you can see, we got through pretty much almost everything, except when we get over here, we didn't get to do our chapter 12 introduction because our Monday and Tuesday math review took a while, but that's okay because it reviews things that we have been learning and have learned in the past. And in science, I had the students actually do something else other than these. I needed them to go back and reread the first lesson, lesson 5.1 on their own, because I realized yesterday as I was reading it along with them, they still did not understand the concepts of the lesson. So I wanted them to go ahead and read it on their own and answer the questions in the book. So the three to one response and the other lesson along with the lesson quiz, I'm just gonna have to postpone it. I don't know if I'll have time for it tomorrow. I'll see if I can squeeze a little bit in. We'll see. But that is pretty much how our day went. And also I noticed that the students are acting a little bit more silly than usual and they have all this energy and I can tell spring is in the air, spring break is a few days away and I know that they're getting antsy for that spring break. I want it too, believe it or not. So I'm trying to make some different ways that I can encourage positive behaviors. So that's what I'll be doing for the rest of the week and awarding extra dojo points to students that I catch doing the right thing. And I'm going to do it live. So I'm going to have dojo open in the background and I'll probably just do it on my phone without them noticing. So they hear the cling, you know, sound every time someone gets awarded points and they're probably going to be like, what was that? And then I'll let them know and they'll be like, oh, okay, let me try to behave. Let me try to do right choices and maybe I can get dojo points. So we'll see how that goes. So let me go ahead and take you to writing camp and what happened today. Starting with the handout that the students received today. So this is the handout on precise language and what the focus was for today. On the very back of this sheet, I went ahead and I gave them notes on does your essay have personality? And we talked about that. And you'll see how this goes along with the same information that's in the PowerPoint. So my process is I first make the handout and then I make the PowerPoint. So this was part of their packet along with the features of a top score opinion essay for all three domains. So here we have purpose, focus, and organization, evidence and elaboration, and conventions of standard English. And on the back, we have the same thing, but for the informative essay. 
So I did provide this for the students so they know what a 442 essay needs to have. Then we went over what is precise language, some common questions for it, words to avoid, and ways that we can make our writing sparkle with language diamonds. And I'll show you something really cool that I did during the lesson today. And on the back, I went ahead and reviewed ways that we revise using arms and edit using cups. And of course, that went along with today's PowerPoint, which I started by saying what happened previously last week on Writing Camp. So we went over the parts of an essay, using the TREAT acronym to help us write our body paragraphs, the parts of a body paragraph using our hamburger image, and then how do we go from buckets into topic sentences, how we go from topic sentences into paragraphs. And again, the way we do that is once we have our topic sentence, we just write three or more details about that topic sentence, and then we put it together in a paragraph which has a transition, reason, evidence, elaboration, evidence, elaboration. And we also reviewed that last week we went over how to use transitions effectively and some transitional phrases they can use, along with the pencil elaboration strategy and examples of each of those for this particular topic sentence. And then we started on today's lesson. So these were the three things that we focused. You already saw it in the handout. And the first one was about the personality. As you can see, each of these things were in that handout and I just make the PowerPoint with that. And then we went into section two, which are the features of a top scoring essay. So I went through each domain. So for, first I went through purpose, focus, and organization for opinion, and then for informative. Notice the only thing that really changes is we go from, you know, sustaining an opinion to sustaining a topic or controlling idea. Then we went into elaboration and what is the top score for that in opinion and informative. And then of course, conventions of standard English, which was the same for both. So I just did one slide. Then we went into the last part of the presentation, which was the bulk of our lesson, which was using precise language. So I talked about what is precise language, how do we use precise language, and how to avoid these common weak words. So if we're using stuff, what stuff or thing am I really talking about? Am I actually talking about? So we want to be more specific and precise. That's what precise means. And of course, with a lot, how much do I actually mean, you know, when I say a lot? or any of these words, what am I actually trying to say? Now, I did go ahead and tell the students that it's okay to have some of these words in your writing, but when your writing is mostly packed with these words, like you find them everywhere, that's when you wanna make changes and be more precise with your language. Now, other ways we can add sparkle to our writing, we can use figurative language and writing skills as long as they go along with the topic and the purpose of our writing task. So then I went ahead and I did a practice with them. I showed them this paragraph, which was basically full of fluff, is full of words and very unclear. So this is where the cotton candy came in. I found these bags of cotton candy in Target, my local Target, in the Easter section, and they were only $1 for this bag. So of course I didn't wanna take this bag to the presentation, so I actually emptied two bags and put them in a plastic container, as you can see right here. Then I went ahead and I had a plastic bowl that I filled up with water, and I explained to the students after I read that paragraph that it was full of fluff, and fluff just doesn't hold up, and this is how I did a visual representation of that. This is a demonstration that I got years ago from my friend Melissa Forney. She used to do a lot of writing conferences here in Florida, and she did this in one of those conferences and in a couple of others as well, but it has stayed with me. And it's a demonstration that I haven't used in a while, but I thought would go great with this lesson. So you saw that paragraph, it was made of fluff. So I have the cotton candy here. Of course, I told the students because they're like, oh, is that cotton candy? And I'm like, no, it's fluff. So I'm like, well, this paragraph, you know, it looks like it has a lot of words. It looks like it's very full, but you know what? It's full of fluff and fluff just doesn't hold up. And as you can see, the cotton candy just disintegrates, dissolves, basically it dissolves in the water and all that's left is the color, but it didn't have anything to hold it together. So that's what we want to avoid in our writing. We want to avoid fluff words or words that are unclear and not specific enough because they just won't be memorable to our reader and they won't make our writing stand out. Instead, we want to focus on changing those words, those weak words, that fluff, 
into sparkling language, language that makes your writing sparkle, which I'll show you the next slides in a moment. But in here, in this cute little vaults box, I have some jewels. And that's what I say, they're jewels, they're sparkly jewels. Whoop, and there goes one. I was gonna show you what happens. That I actually got these from Michaels. And every time I did a change to that fluffy paragraph, and I added a precise word, precise language, it made my writing sparkle with more detail. So every time I revised that paragraph, which I'm gonna show you how I did it, I would add more and more jewels or sparkling details right into this bowl of water. And as you can see, those stay in there, those hold up. They don't just vanish, they're not forgettable. They make our writing become memorable and stick with our reader. And ultimately, what we want to accomplish with that, if we do that with every single paragraph in our writing, then our writing can become a beautiful, shining, sparkling diamond, and diamonds are forever. So we want our writing to be memorable, and in order to do that, we need to use precise language and use words that make our reader picture and understand how we feel about the topic, depending on the topic, and so forth. So this was a really great lesson. Another thing that I did, let me just put this aside for a moment, is I took out this pan balance, and this little balance was another thing that my friend Melissa Forney used in her presentation. So she's like, you know, that fluff, it looks like it has mass. Let's see if it has mass. So if you put it on one side of the balance, of course it has mass, it went down. But how does it hold up against a diamond? If we were to write our writing and add those sparkling language diamonds, look what happens. They easily outweigh the fluff. So we definitely wanna shoot for those diamonds over the fluff, and how do we do that? Well, let me take you back to the PowerPoint so I can show you how I turned that fluffy paragraph into a sparkling diamond of a paragraph and the tips that I gave the students. To go from this fluffy paragraph into a paragraph with a lot of sparkling, clear details, we started going sentence by sentence. So that's the strategy that I show the students. So they go sentence by sentence and they try to see if they have any weak words, any words that are not clear or precise. So in this case, we have stuff. So then we changed it into a specific word. What stuff are we talking about? Wild animals. So we kept going through this process of going sentence by sentence. Sometimes I included more than one sentence and adding those details. In this case, look what happened to this sentence. I changed it from where it was to a previous part of the paragraph because it made more sense there. And then of course we kept going through this process in order to change this fluffy paragraph into a more precise paragraph. So again, this is before we did all of that and this is the after. And here I highlighted in purple all the precise language that we used in order to make our writing clear and also add language that our readers can picture and understand our point. Of course, this led me to make sure I review revising and editing. So we went over what is revising and how we revise with arms and what is editing and how we revise with cups. And then the students had their turn to practice adding precise language to a paragraph. So I will show you that. But first, let me show you how I wrapped up this PowerPoint. I went over the important tips and the review, and then I wish them the very best. And hopefully they'll remember some of the tips that we went over during these three weeks of writing camp. This is the activity that I came up with. It is for the topic of kids and sports, and it is double-sided. It is for the opinion of school should not require good grades, and school should require good grades. And what you can see from both of these sides is that I have a fluffy paragraph on each. These paragraphs don't have specific details. They do not use precise language. So the students need to go first circle the weak words and then use these lines to rewrite this paragraph into more precise language. So of course we keep the parts that are working and we just change and tweak and add details wherever they are needed. And that was our writing camp lesson for today. We also ended the lesson by having the teachers get some camping stickers, which are right here. I got these from Amazon. They brought two packs. And honestly, for our 154th graders that we have, one pack was fine. So they are really cute stickers. They have different sayings. So happy camper. 
and camping and the lantern, etc. So it was really nice for the students to have these today. I'll link them down below if you're interested in getting those. But my friends, that is the big highlight for today. Because writing is basically the same passage we've been rereading these past couple days and reviewing important skills. And then, of course, math is our weekly review. And in science, so we're just rereading the lesson from yesterday for more clarity. So I really wanted to take some time to show you that. And, of course, the other highlight was the well way, which here's the bag. So here's the bag they gave us. I wanted to see what was in here. And it's actually like a sleeping mask that is very comfy. Here it is right here. I also put my bag of vegetables in here. Here it is. They were also giving some radishes, so I got some radishes. That was from a teacher that has a program where they get fruits and veggies delivered to the school. But look at all these nice fruits and vegetables in here. This is a white pear right here, so I can't wait to sink my teeth into that one. And in here, there's also a mask. I put a whole bunch of little water bottles and some papers with information. I also wanted to say that if you want to grab a diamond, it's not really a diamond, it's glass, but it looks really pretty. I got this from Michaels along with those jewels. They're not really jewels, they're made out of plastic. They are found in the decorative section for the things that you put in vases. And the vaults box was from Target many, many years ago. I don't even know if those are still available, but that's where I keep them. And the students at the end wanted to get one of the jewels and maybe in the future, that's something to consider. But in the past, I've also gotten stickers that look like jewels. And whenever students use sparkly language in their writing, they get a sticker for the sparkly language that they use. So those are different ways that you can incorporate that idea into your writing lesson. All right, so that is where I'm going to leave you for today. So I will see you tomorrow. Welcome to Thursday, everyone. It is the end of the day and happy St. Patrick's Day. So I am wearing my green shirt. This is actually my Zelda shirt or my Link shirt, I should say, right? Because it's Link saying, call me Zelda one more time. And I love Link and I love The Legend of Zelda. So anyway, I digress. Today was one of those days where at the end of the day, I was like, you know what, guys? We're going to use some extra recess and we did not get to social studies. Also, we took time in the morning to piggyback on the science lessons that I wasn't able to finish yesterday because the students were rereading the previous lesson. So it did take up our writing time. So this is what our agenda looks like for today. Here it is from the checks. You can see what we got done. And from the arrows, you get to see what I need to move over for another day. It happens, you know, we're feeling it. It's like spring break is almost there. We just have one more day and then we all get a week off. But tomorrow before they take their reading assessment in the morning, we'll go ahead and go over the reading response questions for the story, The Incredible Shrinking Potion. And then we'll compare it to the anchor text. The students will take their progress monitoring assessment for that unit, Wonders Unit 5, Weeks 1 and 2. And then we'll have time for our writing that we were working on. And we'll continue with math, chapter 12 on measurement. And of course, we'll end the day with our social studies wrapping up chapter seven. And I'm pretty sure we'll have time to even do the chapter test, which is a pretty short test. And that, my friends, is the rundown of today. I'll show you a couple of highlights from some of the sheets that the students were answering, specifically our weekly reviews and what they completed for science. In math, I also introduced the students to the kingdom of Gallen. So I had them draw a big G in their math reference sheet, which has all the conversions. So I said, in the kingdom of Gallen, there are four queens, and each queen has a prince and a princess, and each prince and princess has two cats. So they can understand that a gallon is made up of four quarts. Each quart has two pints, and each pint has two cups. And they can see just from this drawing how many pints make up a gallon, how many cups make up a gallon or half a gallon, so that this could be a really good visual aid to help them. And even though we were going over the customary units of length, weight, and liquid volume, in our measurement benchmarks, we also went over the metric system units. So I did introduce them a little bit to King Henry Died Base drinking chocolate milk, which is a mnemonic device that we use to remember the metric system. So the base will be whatever unit that we are using. It could be meter, liter, or gram. 
And then I show them how this is connected to the place value system, where this side is the decimal side and this side is the tenths, the hundreds, and the thousands, with base being like the ones place. So this can help the students once we get deeper into the metric system, which of course we're not gonna get to until after we come back from spring break, but that's fine. Tomorrow we are going to wrap up these customary units of measurement and we're gonna talk about line plots and the students will take their mid-chapter checkpoint in math. So yeah, it seems like tomorrow's gonna be a little bit of a testing day, but I have to make sure we get these things done because I don't want them to forget once they come back a week later, right? Okay, so let me show you some of the highlights from today. So here is the weekly language review. This comes from One Stop Teacher Shop. So we were working on Wednesday and Thursday today going over all of these skills, and we had already completed Monday and Tuesday. Then for science, they completed the three to one response on the lesson that we were doing in science where they needed to list three things that they learned, two things that were interesting and a question that they have. And then they completed the lesson quiz on natural resources and energy. It's just a simple six question quiz that they completed in order to show their understanding. And to start math, we completed Wednesday and Thursday from our weekly math review. And again, this comes from One Stop Teacher Shop and we had already completed Monday and Tuesday as well. And what I like about these, again, is that they review the different chapters that we have gone over from chapter one all the way to our latest chapter, which was chapter 10 and so forth. So that is basically the learning that we focused on today. I'm going to go ahead and get ready to get going in a few minutes because I'm going to Orange Theory. I haven't gone since last week because I knew this week was gonna be a busy week and there are some days that I just can't make it because of schedule. So I am going today, I'm going tomorrow, and I'm gonna go on Saturday and we'll see how it goes because I'm currently doing the transformation challenge and we're currently in week seven. Next week is the last week and that's when I'm gonna be in spring break. So we'll see how that transformation challenge ends. I'm very excited to see and compare the results from the beginning to now. I also wanted to say that it is currently Prim, which is a Jewish holiday and celebration. And my friend, Mr. Hockerman, who I have featured in this vlog before when I was talking about Lacus back in December for Hanukkah. So he came by today and gave me this beautiful box, as you can see. And we're gonna open it so that I can show you the nice little things that are in here. And thank you so much to Mr. Hockerman and his wife for putting this together, because I think it's amazing. This is so beautiful. It's a gold box and it has a purple ribbon. So let me just slide the ribbon over and open the box. Okay, so I don't wanna completely remove it so it's on the side, but check this out. This is so beautiful. It says Hockerman Golden Ticket. Happy Purim from the Hockermans. This golden ticket ensures admittance and then it goes over the different contents that are in the box. But check it out. These are everlasting gobstoppers. So there's a whole Willy Wonka theme. Here's a Wonka bar, which is a Hershey's bar. Really cool. This is a busy lifting drink. So it's a little Sprite. And over here we have Wonka's Magic Chewing Gum. So this is the one that turned violet, violet, purple. And this is the Wonka's Lickable Wallpaper, which of course is a fruit roll up. And here's some yummy treats, some instant cocoa. And I just thought this was beautifully put together. And look at this box. Oh my God, there's a golden egg because of course, Willy Wonka had geese that laid golden eggs. And there are Hershey's Kisses inside. Amazing. So this is so cute. And the attention to detail is so nice. So happy Purim to all my Jewish friends and family out there. And thank you again to the Hawkermans. All right, I'll see you tomorrow, Friday. Hello everyone and welcome to the end of the day on Friday. We have made it through this week and I'm officially on spring break for a full week, so I'm excited. Now I'm gonna tell you a rundown of our day, but I didn't put an agenda on the board. As you can see, all the little labels are right here, but it's okay. It was just one of those days. And I did plan on giving that reading assessment that I mentioned yesterday, but I completely forgot that today we were having a special ceremony and dedication of our dear beloved colleague that passed away back in December. 
and they were doing a live stream so that all the students in the school can participate. So they actually did a little ceremony in the media center and then everyone moved outside because they dedicated a sign by our bus area, which is now called Dorville Drive. And it's very nice to be able to remember our friend that way. And I did go during dismissal and I tapped on the sign, sort of like a high five to my dear friend Vasti and he is sorely missed and his legacy will continue and we all remember him with fun loving memories so that's what happened this morning so of course we didn't have time to give that assessment but it's okay we went ahead and worked on a couple of other things because after that it was time for writing now this morning while the students were getting ready for that i did give them two science activities to work on so i will show you that right now i had students read the very next lesson in our current topic which is environmental impacts of using energy so i wanted them to read one specific section impact of energy production and it had a lot of cause and effect relationships so i had them complete this cause and effect chart so if they had the cause they will find the effect and if they had the effect, they will find the cause of that effect. So they have five different relationships to complete. And then after reading the lesson, students completed the little lesson quiz on that lesson so that they can show their understanding of the environmental impacts of using energy. So then after that, students worked on writing. Like I said, they were just working in their duos and trios for that kids and sports paragraph that they were working on. Not sure if they're completely done, but when we come back, we're gonna continue on that for two more days, and then they'll take another practice writing test, which will be the last one for this school year before they take the real one the week after that. So then after writing, we went ahead and went into math. We did a review of all the customary units of length, volume and mass or weight and then we went to lunch we had recess they went to pe and when we came back from pe we worked on the last two sections for our current chapter seven as you may recall we had already done these sections last week but we ran out of time to do the very last two sections which was section 13 florida and the civil rights movement and section 14 florida in the space age so as you can see they had questions to answer based on the artifacts that i showed them as well as coming up with their own questions with their partners and answering those and coming up with a symbol to represent that section. We then completed the lesson game and the students completed the chapter test for chapter seven. So we have fully wrapped up chapter seven. And when we come back, we will start in chapter eight, which is the peopling of Florida, which is another great chapter. They're gonna be working in groups. They're gonna be divided into five different groups so that they can represent five different groups of people that live in Florida and have shaped Florida in one way or another. And they're actually gonna work on creating a collage for that group. It'll be a digital collage that I'm going to have them work on. So let's see how all of that goes. So my friends, I just finished doing my lesson plans for when I come back. I have printed them out. I'm actually gonna put the agenda on the board. So when I come back, my future me will thank me for what I have done today. And it'll be great because it'll be me coming back after a long week break. I'm also gonna make sure the schedule is good to go and the calendar is good to go. So that's where I'm going to wrap up this video because I do have to get that going so I can also go to Orange Theory. So I will see you next time. Thank you so much for coming along. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to hit the like button, leave a comment down below. Let me know what you thought or any questions you may have. Also, if you haven't subscribed, please consider subscribing, it's free. And hit the bell for notifications so you don't miss any future videos. I hope you have a beautiful, magical day and don't forget to smile. Hello dreamers, wishers, and magical thinkers. Thank you so much for making it to the very end of this video and for showing your support. If you'd like to subscribe, you can do so by clicking on my picture down here. You can also check out my latest videos here and here. Don't forget to believe in the magic that's inside you because you are capable of great things. See you next time.